Today we are starting a huge renovation project on our trailer. We are removing this U dinette which takes up the whole rear section of our trailer. And the reason we're doing that is because this area is the primary workspace for Jenny and I. We work on our laptops, Jenny here and I here, for eight to 10 hours a day. And the ergonomics at this dinette are just awful. The cushions have flattened down so it feels like you're sitting on raw just bare wood even though we replaced this cushion and this cushion with high density foam they've already started to sink back down our necks and our backs are really starting to hurt us and we're both getting tension headaches all the time now because of it so we are pulling out this dinette and we're going to replace it with comfortable ergonomic desks and chairs so that it doesn't hurt us just to sit in one spot and work for eight to ten hours a day also, this is the only seating in the entire trailer. So we also eat here. So our laptops and other electronics that we need to work are, they just take up this whole table. So when it's lunchtime, dinner time, or breakfast, whenever we want to eat, we have to move all that out of the way to make room for bowls or plates or whatever. And it's just a pain. So not only are we going to have two desks, but we're also going to have a fold up chair or a fold up table between them that we're going to use for our eating space. So the first thing that I need to do is take all this out. Hopefully it's going to be easy because I'm pretty sure it's all just screwed in. Hopefully there's nothing glued in, but we'll find out. Let's get to it. Now, if this is your first time on our channel, my wife Jenny and I are full-time RVers, which means we live in our RV. So the fact that this dinette is the only seating in the entire thing, and it's so incredibly uncomfortable, is massively important. So we need to make a change. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to get started on this project is go ahead and take this table section out by unscrewing, you know, these uh, little mounts for these pedestals. And then I'm just gonna move to each section of the dinette and just pull them out in sections. Sorry, pup. I know you're comfortable, but you gotta get off now. Go on. What? What is? No, get on. Go on. Get out of here.
One of a couple issues we need to address with this renovation project is that the furnace used to be covered by the dinette. Now that we've removed that, it has exposed it. So we need to recover the furnace. So what we're gonna do is we're going to build basically a box out of it. I've got two by twos that I'm going to bail, uh, build a frame out of and then cover that frame with uh, quarter inch plywood. And then we're going to remount the uh, factory air return vent onto this side of the box so that uh, air can still get to the furnace. Same thing. We're flat. Yep, we're flat. Is we're that low a little more, yeah. Okay. All right, good. Yep. Careful. You have it too low now. So yep. This. We'll go right there. Yep, just like that. Perfect. Cool. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's put this one on. Yay! Yay indeed. Okay. Alrighty. Good. Jenny. <laughs> this doesn't have another screw in it, dang it. <laughs> She's a helper. Hello. But as we are not done yet. She's just too curious. She couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. Hello. We're able to finish the frame for the furnace box and uh, we put this cross member up top here just so uh, there wasn't this big void for the plywood so that it had another uh, cross member spanning that for support. And uh, I, we actually had to run to Lowe's and get some more of these two by twos because, or two by two lengths because I failed to uh, get enough in the first place to uh, make all the members that we needed to. I'm sure some of you know what that's like. It's, you know, you start a project, oh, I gotta go to the hardware store. Okay, start working again, oh, I gotta make another run to the hardware store. That's basically me in a nutshell. 
uh, but uh, because of that, it's getting a little late, so we're going to go ahead and stop for the night, and then we're gonna pick right up tomorrow, making the plywood for the top and the sides. <laughs> no playing on the job site. Well, I guess we're done for the night, right? Yeah, they can play all they want. Now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I like how it loves her big doggy. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> now it's day two of our dinette removal slash workspace renovation project in our trailer and we woke up this morning and realized that we've already made a mistake. <laughs> the furnace box that we were constructing last night, we realized that one side of it was actually too long. We need to fit a fold up table between the furnace box and a cabinet and we actually made the furnace box too long so that that table wouldn't fit. So this morning before turning the cameras on, we went ahead and disassembled the frame, recut some of those members, and put the frame back together so that that table will now fit. So now that the furnace box frame is the side that it should have been, we can go ahead and make the plywood sides and top to that furnace box. Good? Yeah, I'm happy. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. It's good for me. Now that I've got this opening in uh, this side of the plywood so that uh, this furnace vent can go there and the furnace can breathe, uh, the construction of this is almost done. The last thing to do for the furnace box is to cut this trim. So we've got flat trim for the sides that go against the walls and the ground. And then we've got this 90 degree trim for this side this side and then this side so this is so it kind of gives it a nice finished look and it also hides the screws that is going to screw the plywood to the frame uh, and then once these are cut got to paint them and then the furnace box is basically done but this whole time i've been cutting stuff jenny has also been working on her project so what have you been doing jenny it's right in front of us i i'm gonna get comfy okay you do that <laughs> I have been cutting this rug that we bought, which Get is, this, this rug is what, five by seven and a half? Yes. So it's five feet this way, seven and a half feet this way. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't perfectly fit in here. Well, yeah, because we've got this in we've the way. We've got that. We've, we've got, got a cabinet, cabinet here. There's we've got a, a cabinet there. Yep. Um, so it doesn't fit perfectly. So what I've been doing is I've been cutting out and then sealing the, the edges of this rug. I've started with this side here. Oh, let me get up. Sure. Yeah. I've started with this. And this side fits perfectly. Yes, it does. Uh, it's a little off kilter because of the way it was just folded, but yep. <laughs> but it fits perfectly. And I sealed it with hot glue. 
the edges. The edges. To keep from fraying, she ran a bead of hot glue all along the edge. Mm -hmm. So that should keep it from fraying out. Yep, but I have two more to do. And hopefully I will have enough left over that maybe, because it's not actually quite long enough <laughs> this way. Seven and a half feet and we are at seven feet nine inches this way. So I'm short three inches over there. Which means maybe with my scrap I can fill it in. Don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. We'll see when I get the rug all cut up. Yep. But So back to work. Back to work. What are you doing? Get out of here. things it needs to go around in here but the rug itself is seven and a half feet wide long seven and a half feet long but from wall to wall our RV is seven feet nine inches so we've got this space right here but I have a big piece of scrap for where I cut out for the furnace so I'm going to see what I can do about fitting some scrap pieces in here to cover this too hopefully it doesn't look really bad <laughs> Now that Jenny's basically all done with cutting and fitting the rug, I can get back to my part of the project. And the next part is the trim on that furnace box. Uh, I already measured, so I know exactly what length cuts I need to make on all this trim. Um, yeah, but the problem is, is that I've never trimmed anything before. So what I've done is I'm gonna leave all my measurements, all my cuts a little long, so that when I start fitting everything in, it's easier for me to just come back and shave off the lengths if necessary. I finished making all the cuts on the trim and everything's looking really good. It's all fitting in nice and snugly. Um, leaving each of the trim pieces a little long and then coming back and just shaving them and fitting them in uh, so that they're nice and tight was definitely the way to go. And that's exactly what I did with these miter cuts as well. So yeah, it's all looking really well. And yeah, there we go. Perfect, right? Sure. Yep. <laughs> you got it to balance. Yeah, I did. Well, all that's left now is uh, this all needs painted. So um, take all the trim off, take the plywood off, and paint all that. Uh, but unfortunately, it's already starting to get dark and the air is starting to cool off. So we don't have enough time to paint today. Um, you know, it's so late in the season. It's getting dark at like 5 p.m. So. Um, we ran out of time today, we're going to get to that tomorrow, but there's uh, another issue we can still address tonight.
Another problem we need to address with this project is this storage door is right here. Uh, it used to lead to a storage bay that was underneath the dinette. So now that the, the dinette is out, it just leads right onto the inside of the trailer. Uh, it's on the opposite side of our furnace box. And what we need to do is insulate this area because I can already feel that this is a lot colder than the wall. So we want to insulate this and also seal it off. So that's what this is for. So I just got some blue board, um, foam insulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right here, have Jenny hold it, and then I'm going to go outside, open that storage bay and kind of trace it out um, and then come back in and cut it to fit with a Stanley knife. And I'm gonna cut it a little big, so I'm gonna cut on the outside of the line so that it pushes in really firmly and I kinda gotta jam it in there. And then after this is in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this whole wall up to you know about here, just so uh, the blue board is hidden and the storage bay is sealed off. Uh, we're just gonna use some quarter inch plywood to um, seal this all off. So I finally got the blue board foam insulation literally jammed into this opening. I really wanted to make it super snug right there so that it filled any gaps uh, and just did the best that this type of insulation can do at, you know, insulating. So um, this is all we're gonna do for today. Tomorrow we're going to seal this off. We're going to cut the plywood board that's going to go in front of this to really to seal this and cover this. Uh, and then at a later time, uh, we're going to cover that in a um, kind of stick on vinyl that has a peel back and then you just stick it on. Uh, and we're going to use something that kind of has a wood look to it. So it'll look really nice. Uh, we don't have that yet. So we got to order that and we'll do that at a later time. Uh, but Tomorrow we're also going to paint the uh, um, plywood and trim for the furnace box, and yeah. But so that's all we did for today. See you tomorrow. Ouch! Ouch! You are going to town on my toe, aren't you? Jeez, Alice. And now it's time to paint the wood for the furnace box, so we can go ahead and finish that part of the project. So now while we're waiting for the paint to dry outside, we're coming back into the trailer and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this uh, cover board that I made with this stuff. It's like a, a vinyl wrapping and we got this gray wood grain that we thought looked good. Uh, and you just peel off the back of it and stick it on. And then we're also going to apply this just as high as this board is to this wall and then the wall across from it just to kind of give this whole area a uniform look. So. Just roll this out. Can you take it? And roll it out. Good. 
just going to pull in small chunks. Okay. Okay. Oh, too fast. Sorry. Okay, keep going. That's a good pace. Just keep going. And now since this wallpaper is put in behind the frame, I can finally secure this um, furnace box frame permanently to the floor and the walls. Now that our frame is nice and secure to the walls and to the ground, we can go ahead and start putting the plywood panels on. And then after that, Brad nail the trim on and our box will be finished. So after test fitting this trim on, I've noticed that these corner sections this uh, 90 degree trim isn't going to cover these screw holes as well as I'd hoped. So I'm going to spackle over those screw holes with a white spackle so that they're still hidden even though they're peeking out a little bit from this trim. All right, well then we'll see how that looks once that spackle dries. If it still doesn't look good enough, I'll go ahead and take a small little brush and that white paint I used to paint this and I'll just, you know, touch up over that spackle once it's fully dry. And now that we've got those holes covered up with spackle and I also painted them white after they dried, it's time to brad nail our trim on, finish this side of the project up. Well, the furnace box is finally finished for the most part. I am going to come back and spackle over all these brad nails and paint over those so you can't even see them. And also this, like I said before, this air return vent was supposed to be white, but when we went home for the holidays, we forgot to take it with us. So weren't able to sandblast it and paint it, but next time we are back home in Fort Wayne, we're going to get that taken care of. Um, but for now, you know, it works. <laughs> Now that the interior modifications to the trailer are all finished, it's time to create the desk that is going to replace the dinette and be our primary workspace inside the trailer. 
Now we're going to use a two foot by eight foot slab of butcher block countertop made out of birch. Uh, and currently it's a little too big to fit in the trailer. So we got to cut it down lengthwise and widthwise just a little bit to make it fit. The interior width, so from wall to wall inside the trailer measured seven feet, eight and three quarter inches wide. However, the trailer walls, you know, kind of bow out here and they bow in there. They're not exactly straight. So we're actually going to cut an eighth inch under what was measured just to make sure that it'll fit. So we're going to cut it down to seven feet, eight and five eighths of an inch. And also widthwise, it doesn't fit as well. We need to remove one inch. It's currently 24 inches, so we're going to cut the width down to 23 inches. And since we don't really have a table saw that's suitable for this large of a slab of wood, uh, what we're going to need to do to get the straightest cuts that we possibly can is use a circular saw with a straight edge clamped to the tabletop. After cutting the table down to size, I went ahead and sanded the entire table, top, bottom, and sides with 220 grit sandpaper, which is what was recommended by the polyurethane that we purchased. We tested a drop piece that was cut off of the table with water-based and oil-based polyurethanes. And it turns out that the water-based polyurethane matches the fold-out table that we purchased for our trailer almost perfectly, whereas the oil-based polyurethane gave a much more amber coating. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the water-based satin polyurethane purely because it matches that other fold-out table that's already in our trailer. And it's nice for both of them to match. So after sanding, I vacuumed uh, the whole table and then went over it with a tack cloth and I'm going to be applying three coats of this water-based polyurethane and I have to wait two hours between coats and I'm going to sand with 220 grit sandpaper between coats to just get a super smooth surface. Now it's time for the very last part of this project, which is getting this new desk into the trailer. And what's going to make that a little difficult is that since this desk is so wide, we can't put it in through the front door. We really can't maneuver this desk around inside the RV to get it into place. So we actually have to bring it in through this storage bay, which is okay since we removed the dinette, the storage bay just leads right into the inside of our trailer. Hi! Hi, puppy. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> but before we do that, we're going to pre-fit the legs that are gonna go on. We're gonna uh, pre-drill the pilot holes for the screws that are gonna uh, hold these to the table. And then we will bring it inside and put these legs on inside the trailer. And the legs we chose for this are what's called hairpin legs. And we did these because we just really like the design of these. They've got kind of a minimalist sort of simplistic style to them that we just really like. And we went with a clear coated uh, raw steel look. So you can even see the uncleaned welds. We just find that really cool. And for this project, we had to get two legs that are actually 12 inches shorter than the other side because of the fact 
that we've got the furnace box on the one side of the trailer. So these legs are actually going to sit on top of that furnace box and then the two longer legs are going to sit on the floor. Thankfully, now that the table is in and the legs are mounted, this project is coming to a close. We've just got a couple things left to do though. And one of those is we're going to secure the table to this wall, this wall, and the one on the other side using 90 degree brackets. And we're doing this just to keep the table from moving as we go down the road. And it's just gonna tie these three walls together with this table and you know just secure everything real good we bought six of these so hopefully we're wanting to put four into this back wall and then one into each side wall And now it's time to brad nail this cover board in. We already placed the um, foam insulation, the blue board, in this cavity behind that storage door for insulation like I showed you earlier in the video. And now it, we can finally fix this to the wall since the table's in and we have no need to ever open that door again. <laughs> And then the very last step before this whole project can finally be wrapped up is I'm going to spackle over these uh, brad nail holes and then once the spackle dries, I'm going to paint over it so that you can't even tell that they're there just for that nice clean look and then I'm all done. That feels good to say. <laughs>
It feels incredible to say that the dinette project is finally done. Oh, this was a long project, but it was so worth it. This space is so much more open and it's so much more usable now. These workspaces that Jenny and I have are much better than before. They're much more comfortable, much more ergonomic, and we actually have more room too with this desk spanning the entire wall. Not only that, but one big thing for us, like I said earlier, is that we wanted to have separate eating and working spaces. So now we can slide this table out, fold the leg up, and then have dinner facing each other. And we don't have to completely tear apart our workstations, meaning move our laptops, move all the junk that we've been working on, and then eat, and then afterwards put it all back. It's just a big hassle, big waste of time, and just a headache in general. So. We think this space is going to be a lot more usable now, and we think it's a lot more attractive too, which is good. You know, doing stuff like this kind of makes it feel more homey instead of just, you know, living in a camper. So, yeah, we're very happy with how it turned out, uh, and I, I think the animals like it too. Butters has a little perch now, she can look outside, you know, just the little things like that add up too. So, we're very happy with it. and. Glad to say it's done. Jenny, are you happy? Woo! Is that a yes? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right guys, if you've got any questions on anything that I did, um, go ahead and post those in the comments below. And I'm also going to be uh, putting links in the description below to all the various things we bought, like this table and the legs, etc. just random stuff that I used or that we bought during this project, in case you were interested in that yourself. But until our next video, see you guys later. Bye.